years and later as the chairman now for two years from 2022 October I have interacted with my, uh, how the government spends its revenue so the government spend is something that now I understand very well so if I'm given this opportunity I can easily bring a difference in our financial management because that is a big concern in this country at the moment Mr. Speaker, I think I would leave it there because if I went now to talk that about my political life and sharing audio for 10 years, and I, I think I would take all the time that's allocated for this vetting. So let me start. That will do for now. I'll invite members to ask you questions. And like I said, members, don't be prejudiced by the fact that John Bardi is your colleague. We have interviewed colleagues before and you must be uh, able to ask questions without fear or favor. David Speaker, you will go first. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Badi, I think this is within your forte. Uh, as you know, there is only two sources of revenue for government, which is borrowing or by taxing. Currently, uh, Kenya's public debt is approximately 72% of our GDP, which is a sort of causing concerns across the country. Um, and, um, and so and also it has increased the debt servicing costs, it's affected our fiscal space for development projects. And so in the light of the rejection of the finance bill, if approved, if this appointment is approved, how do you plan to address Kenya's high public debt and ensure a sustainable debt management? And in connection to that, uh, the Kenya Revenue Authority has struggled with tax collection and, uh, and has not been very efficient on doing that, and therefore we've had a tax revenue shortfall. And uh, all the efforts to try and increase the tax base and tax the informal sector has been heavily resisted. And um, which leaves just, just the, those, those who are formally employed, employed paying, paying the tax. tax. So, so what, what measures, measures will you implement to improve tax, tax collection and expand, expand the, the tax base without, without overburdening the taxpayers? Tax Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. speaker. And, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, speaker uh, for, for these two very, very important, important questions. I will, I will start, start with the issue of public debt. debt. Mr. Mr. Speaker, speaker, it is, is true that, that public, public debt, debt levels in this country is worrying. Uh, uh, in, in terms, terms of percentage, percentage, it could be 72, but I think it's still in the region of 67, 68 percent of our GDP, GDP, which is very high. high. Public debt, if you look at it, in terms of a split between external debt and domestic debt, is almost 50-50. We are at about 10.5 trillion at the moment, split it almost 50-50. Uh, I would go into the details of the breakdown, but I think that would be too much information for now. For now. But I want to just mention that in terms of managing public debt, number one priority for me is debt accountability. If you, if you listen, listen to Kenyans, Kenyans at the moment, moment and the discussions around debt, debt Kenyans, Kenyans seem to be asking, asking what, what is our actual level of debt? debt? Is, is it really true, true that, that we have a debt level, level of 10.5 trillion? trillion? The, the answer could be yes, yes but Kenyans, Kenyans want, want proof and evidence. evidence. So, so debt, debt accountability is number one priority for me. me. As, As a matter of fact, I have asked myself, if Kenyans owe people more money, why, Why can Kenyans know the people they, they owe money, how much they owe them, them and, and what is the, rate, uh, the, the, the level, level of interest for each loan? loan. You, you may hear excuses that there are certain, certain agreements, agreements which, which probably discourage this disclosure. But, but the, the question, question is, is can, can you come out, out transparently and explain to Kenyans Kenyan which are these agreements stopping us from knowing who we owe money? One of the things that I think we need to do is to make a debt register a statutory document, which should be published every year, like we publish all the other documents. Kenyans should know. It is not the government that owes money to Chinese, it is the China government, or to World Bank, or to IMF. We know World Bank is the leading, single leading uh, lender to Kenya in terms of amounts, followed by African Development Bank. Number three is China. Number four is Eurobond. 
These people don't, it is not the government which owes the money. It is not the treasury. It is the people of Kenya, the taxpayers who owe these people money. You cannot owe someone money without knowing how much you owe. So I want to put it that debt accountability is important too. We must work on linking projects to loans. We cannot borrow loans for general budgetary support. Actually, where we lost it, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, and Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, is from 2014, we shifted our borrowing strategy from specific donor-funded uh, projects to general support. What that means is that you do your maths, you calculate, your, you, you do your estimate, and then you get your revenue, and whatever is remaining, you put to debt. So debt comes to this country, like the Eurobond, without going to specific projects. How then would you pay that loan if it does not fund value-adding projects or proper investment in public assets? So that is something that we must do. Going forward, I'm talking about now going forward, because what has happened has happened. We we'll have to deal with it, but going forward, that is what we must do. A lot has been said about revenue mobilization, and the focus has been that we should be changing tax rates, we should be increasing tax rates, we should be coming up with new taxes. I don't think that is the solution. The solution to tax mobilization or revenue mobilization should be targeting the tax collector, KRA. KRA is like a cow which we milk without feeding. We have a provision that 2% of our revenue should go towards building capacity of KRA. Of KRA. But we but don't, we don't do, it. do it. Look at the system that uh, KRA is using at the moment. It needs re-engineering. If you, uh, you hear or you listen to those who are involved in collecting taxes, especially, uh, especially uh, um, uh, custom duties. Custom duties, we are losing a lot through smuggling, through counterfeit products, because we don't have a system, we don't have a, a system that is foolproof, a system that can help us uh, manage uh, some of these tax leakages. Remember there was a time, and I'm sure many of us, almost all of us here are old enough, you'll remember, that there was a time when KRA had a very good policy of graduate recruitment into KRA, and they were properly trained, like even for two years. You must have properly trained tax experts. The way we are recruiting staff at KRA at the moment and deploying them needs to be re-looked into. You cannot have people who are not properly trained to collect taxes from people who hire properly trained accountants to calculate their taxes. I also want to say that you need to look at the leadership and management of KRA in general. So my, one of my first tasks will be to make sure that I have a sitting with KRA to look at how we can reform that institution. Because there was a time in this country, not long ago, when we were collecting 18% of our GDP as taxes. Today it is 14%. If we could just increase from 14% to 18% of GDP, you will be adding about 600 billion to our revenue base. So you'll be reducing the fiscal deficit and the fiscal gaps that we have. But finally, you talked about um, the finance bill that has been lost. I want to tell Kenyans, please don't panic. Let us stop making Kenyans panic. Mr. Speaker, you have been here with me. In the 10th Parliament, and even some, uh, I think after, this bill used to be passed in September. We used to have three months in the, into the financial year to, finan to pass finance bill. The minister then was allowed by law through a revenue collection order to allow for some taxes, interim taxes to be collected. But the bottom line is the law could be in place in September, on September 30th. So there is no cause of alarm. We have a legal framework which is still obtaining. Uh, you know, yes, the uh, Finance Act of 2023 has been declared unconstitutional, although I don't know whether I'm correct, that has been appealed. If that is correct, that is good. But still, we don't have a lacuna. In, in fact, fact finance, finance bill, bill is, is a non amendment bill. bill. We, we have uh, about, about five, five or six, six legislation that, that finance bill usually, usually amends. amends. We have, we have excess, excess duty. duty. We have, we have uh, uh, excess, excess duty. duty. We have, we have uh, 
uh, import, import duty. duty. We, we have, have uh, value, value added tax. tax. We have, we have income, income tax. tax. We have we tax, tax procedures act. act. And, and then we, we have fees and levies. And levies. These, these are specific, specific legislation, Mr. Speaker, Speaker, this, this house, house, if I'm if approved, approved, this house, house should, should help me, me bring, bring these legislations, legislations directly, directly touching, touching on this specific, specific statute. statute. We don't, we don't have, have to have a finance, finance bill, bill, but I'll, but I'll seek, seek the guidance, guidance and advice, advice from the Attorney General. But I but believe the good, the good provisions, provisions which, are, which have been lost by this bill, bill which, are which are not contentious, and there are many, which can still help this country to grow. The economy. the economy. We can, we can bring, bring them a specific, specific amendments, amendments to those, to those acts. acts. With, with proper, proper public, public yes, yes, the mother, the mother act, act. With proper, proper public, public participation. participation. Because I think, I think the, the problem, problem we had was that, was that the, public the public felt, felt there, was there was no proper public participation, public participation which, which we had, had but, but maybe, maybe they felt they were not listened to. to. So we'll, so do, we'll do, do the proper public participation. Uh, on some, some of these, of these provisions. provisions. I wanted, I wanted to, to stop there, 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 there was a question on KRA. I think I've combined them. Yes, I've combined them. Yes, 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 you are birds of a feather. Of a feather. <laughs> I, I, I hope I we will flock together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rambo Speaker. First on the light, not on the Rambo Speaker. I know I have always argued on Johnny by the floor. On, on who qualified before, before the other. <laughs> now that, <laughs> now that we are about a feather, feather, I cannot, I cannot now confirm from his certificate that, that I actually qualified, qualified six months ahead of him. Of him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, uh, speaker, uh, uh, besides, besides being a feather, feather in the profession, profession um, um, a midi clay interest, because John Johnny was, was also an accountant at the university when I was a student there, and, and having served with him in this house for uh, almost 12 years, and I chaired the Budget and Appropriations Committee, where he has been a member since he joined Parliament, if I'm right. That's, That's correct. correct. So, uh, John Buddy, now CS nominee finance in the National Treasury, you, and you've put it very well, and uh, you know there are many things that we agree on, especially regarding the budget-making process. And uh, having been a member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and also chaired the Public Accounts Committee, you have said you have had a very good uh, oversight of the expenditure side of government. And uh, I must agree also with you on the revenue side in terms of uh, the finance bill being an omnibus bill and things that uh, we can secure from the finance bill that uh, seem to have been lost. But, but you've also touched on issues touching on KRA. And there are systemic, systemic problems in KRA, and uh, you and me know that uh, our revenue projections, we have always not agreed with them. them. I would now want to hear what, what you intend to do now that the shoe uh, is on the other foot, foot. Um, to make sure that, that our revenue projections are as realistic as possible. Because, because you know, know part, part of, of the problem that, that we had with our fiscal deficit, deficit is that realistic revenue projections coming from, from the National, National Treasury, Treasury and, and uh, of course, course having a manager from KRA. KRA. You spoke about, about the systemic, systemic problems in KRA, KRA including uh, the lack of, of custom, custom system management, uh, proper, proper custom, custom management, proper custom management systems at KRA. KRA. I would also want, want to hear what you intend to do. And you know there is resistance within KRA to have proper systems put in place. Because as you say, especially on the custom side, people are minting hundreds of millions for themselves at the expense of the nation. I want to hear specific what, uh, what specific measures you intend to take uh, at KRA to ensure first that there are proper systems. Uh, because as, as you rightly said, that is what is lacking within KRA besides the management problem that you have alluded to. I think I'll leave it at that for now. Can you manage two in a row? <laughs> Jeanette? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I wanted to ask the nominee, Chairman. You see... <coughs> um, uh, he is here as a nominee so I forgot, yeah. and I not I forgot, yeah. as a chairman of any formation out there. Honestly, actually, I hope Mr. Speaker he was not referring to me being the chairman of ODM. I've already resigned. Oh. Yes. 
And as, as you are aware, aware 70 shillings or 100 shillings collected is going to pay debt. And, and Kenyans, Kenyans don't even know whether, whether we are paying real debt or fake debt. debt. 